I'm Janae Price, and welcome to Ride With Me. The show where we talk to people we love. I support anything where a man's balls might fall out of his pants. That's great. About the places they love. All the waiters are like, no, Mateo, you're not going to pay. Today, we're catching up with comedian Mateo Lane. If you cut your pasta, you're a f-ing psycho. We're going to get his recommendations for New York's West Village. And of course, I'll be heading there myself to check them out. So come along and ride with me. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm really good. Sorry, I couldn't think of any more places. I go to like three places in New York and they're like, they need anything, a coffee shop, pick something. I'm like, I don't know. I have another very random question for you. Yes, I'm single and I'm looking for a husband. Sorry, did I jump the gun? Hey, man, you jumped the gun, but I love the answer. <laughs> Tell us where you're going to be taking us today. Today, I am taking you to the West Village. The village is basically my my homeland. It's where I started in the city, where I started living. I, the first apartment I ever found was through a friend, and it was a tenement apartment. So it had a bathtub in the kitchen. So it literally, I lived like an Italian immigrant from 1914, like a, a, a mother who was like cleaning the floors with like seven kids. But I've always loved this neighborhood and now I work at the Comedy Cellar every single night and it's just become home for me. Like it feels very neighborhoody amongst the chaos. This is gonna be a fun interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First up, we are going to Amano. This is a place I like to go to for good coffee. And again, in the sort of Greenwich Village, West Village vibe, it's not Starbucks, you're not stressed out. People aren't coming in trying to use the bathroom. It's not like, I need an iced latte. You know, it's just a bunch of New Yorkers hanging out and just chilling and talking and the people that work there are great. I love your shirt, by the way. Are you a fan of Totoro? Ooh, so many things. But it's nice to have espresso that isn't burned. Americans often burn espresso and then espresso becomes very bitter when it's burned at too high of a temperature and then so Americans are like, espresso is too bitter, I don't like it. It's like, no, they're making it wrong. So they're one place that actually makes it correctly and it's nice to sit down and get like a nice latte double espresso and chill and, you know, chat. The salt, the chocolate, that's where it's at. This is good too, but that for me is the winner. So I usually get just a flat white with two shots of espresso because I like having equal parts espresso with equal parts steamed milk. And then a cappuccino is sometimes too foamy. And then the rest of the day you're bloated and you know, I bottom. Are you the type that is sprawling out for a few hours getting work done? No, I'm not an asshole. I I don't want to pull up my laptop and write a script that will never be sold. I usually go just to have coffee and sit and relax for like 15 to 20 minutes and then I'm out. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Next up is Piccola Cucina. Piccolo Cucina. Try one more time. Piccola. Piccola. Cucina. Cucina. Yeah, so the Italians, the C-I makes a ch sound. Thank you so much. Piccola Cucina is one of the few Italian restaurants in New York that real Italians consider authentic Italian food. Uh, It's a Sicilian place. My grandfather is Sicilian. And they're so warm. Like, you walk in and they're like, Matteo! And they're just so accommodating. Okay, so we're going to do the macaroni alla norma. Did I say it right? Did I butcher it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I tried, man. No, it's okay. I go there all the time because I love their pasta. It's the one place to get real pasta. I get macaroni alla norma or I get their cacio e pepe. One time I went on a date and this guy was like 40 minutes late. So I just left, but I had gotten a drink of wine, but the guy wasn't showing up and he was so late. I was so mad when I got up to leave. I told the waiter in Italian, I was like, I'm just going to go. So like, how much is the wine? He, like he never showed up and all the waiters were like, no, Matteo, you're not going to pay. You're not going to pay, Matteo. And I was like, okay, all right, okay. They once said to me too, like, oh, do you miss your family? And I was like, I do. And they were like, well, when you come here, we'll be your family. Oh, look at these fat nudes. 
Ooh. <laughs> mm. Are there any things that people do that's simply annoying? Well, ever, number, okay, I have a whole list. Number one, you have to put a lot of salt into your water and put it in when the water's boiling and give your pasta enough water to swim so it doesn't stick with each other. Number two, cook your pasta al dente and finish cooking the pasta in your sauce and use the starchy pasta water to emulsify and bring the sauce and the pasta together. Number three, do not put olive oil in your water. That is absolutely wrong. You do not have enough water in there. That olive oil will not allow the starches and the sauce to stick to each other. Also, when you get your pasta, do not cut your pasta. Do not twirl it with a spoon. Twirl it with your fork. Learn how to do it. If you cut your pasta, you're a f***ing psycho. You take your fork and you pierce it and you spin it on the side of your plate and then pull up. Bye guys, have a good night. Delicious. Thank you. So, where are you gonna be taking us next? Next, we are headed to Thompson Street in between Bleecker and Third. My favorite street in New York is Thompson Street in between Bleecker and Third. And it is a fun Greenwich Village neighborhood and it has great restaurants and weird places that you can play board games with each other. And it's a cool street. I love that street. I love the trees, the closeness. It's like the most quintessential New York street to me. Can you tell me about maybe one location there that just like has your heart. Yeah, it's it's a game store. I think it's called the Uncommons. My friend Henry and I used to go whenever he's in town, we go back to that place where you go and you walk in, you pay like $5 or something, get a coffee, and they have a wall of every board game ever made. And I love Stratego. I love that game and I've not found anyone as passionate about that game as I am. So we'll go in and pick Stratego, but it's kind of fun because you could just pick any board game ever and it forces conversation, forces you to sit with people you don't know. It just feels very old school, cool technology list, fun little spot of board games, which is a little nostalgic and brings back a mix of childhood and quote unquote adventure. <laughs> Have a good day, bye. We're back. Next up, we are headed to Ribalta. This is my favorite place for pizza. So this is a pizzeria. Now pizza comes from Naples, Italy, and this place is certified by a organization coming from Naples to be considered real authentic Napolitano pizza. If they sold ranch dressing, they'll be fined a thousand dollars. Like it's very particular. The oven has to come from Naples. It has to be made a certain way. So it's a real pizza napolitana, which is my favorite style of pizza. And I probably also go there once a week, like the whole staff knows me. They're all from Italy. Are you here for uh, Matteo? Yes, yes, we are, we are. Do you know him? No, I'm new, yeah. Oh my God, hey! <laughs> and they just have incredible pizza, incredible pasta. And it's a great place to go to with your friends if you want to get a big table and just share food. And I've gotten a lot of people hooked to that place, except for my best friend, Bob the Drag Queen, who doesn't have good taste when it comes to pizza and prefers Domino's. And I'll never forgive him. And I want that in writing. Napolitano style pizza is a pizza where you get it, it's individual, usually cut into four, and it's soft, and it's soft in the middle too, and it's puffy on the outside, and it's fresh, light ingredients, and it cooks only for 90 seconds. I like it because you don't feel gross afterwards. You don't, you could be full, but you don't feel like, Ugh. you know, you feel like you ate really good produce. And at the end for the dessert, I get una marscapone, which is like marscapone, egg, and sugar whipped. And they put um, cookies they make there in it with strawberries. It's so good. I don't know how that dessert hasn't taken off in America, but it's so good. Bye guys, thank you so much. Okay, where to next? And finally, my favorite place in the world, the Comedy Cellar. And the Comedy Cellar essentially changed my life and saved my life. You know, this industry stinks and it's a lot of people, it's a lot of rejection and it's a lot of gatekeepers. Noam and Esty at the Comedy Cellar only care if you're funny. 
and they literally helped me pay my rent because they booked me so often. They exposed me to so many other comics that of those comics started taking me out on the road. And it's been a community that I truly consider my family. It's, it's heaven. I'm in heaven at that place. Our man. See you later. Have a good night. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. Got one last question for you. Tell the good people out on the internet where they can find you. It's shameless plug moment. So tell us all the things. You know, follow me on TikTok or Instagram at Mateo Lane, M-A-T-T-E-O-L-A-N-E. -E. Also I have a YouTube channel I started with my producer Chris Cazzo and we're we're bringing a lot of content. You can go to my tour dates and find me on the road. And um, if you want to see me in the city, just go to thecomedyseller.com and go to the lineups and see if I'm on that night. And usually I'm there in the weekdays. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you today. You too. I had so much fun. What, I'm so sorry I wasn't as physically ready as I thought. I thought it was a pre-interview. That's so silly. You look fantastic. Thank you. You sound fantastic. Thank you. It's the Botox. Oh, no. One second, my Amazon is here. We don't have to, oh, unless you want to keep that in the Thrillist, because you know what? That's a New Yorker. <laughs>